Hi, welcome to this look at the March weather prospects. March can be a very, very mixed month because it straddles winter and spring. So we get scenes like this, which is the frozen Grand Union Canal running through Berkhamsted in 2018, but also very spring-like scenes such as this one. Now, to put a little bit of context on how it compares to December, January and February, I thought I'd show some statistics from my weather station here in the Chilterns, which is about 25 miles northwest of central London. What we can see is uh, March 2020, the mean temperature was 6.6 .6 Celsius, which compared to 6.6 .6 in February, so it was identical, 6.4 in January and 6.1 in December. So not a great deal between the four months in that particular year. The previous one, 2019, we can see March was 8.3 Celsius, so it was actually milder than February at 7.0, January at 3.9, and December at 7.1. But in the previous year, 2018, it was 4.5 Celsius compared to 2.1 in February, 4.9 January and 4.6 in December. So it was actually the second coldest of the four months. You can actually, you can also see the rainfall totals there. I'll not run through them, but they are quite varied and there's no, no real pattern there compared to, uh, compared to the other February, January and December. So which is it to be this year? Well, I'll start by taking a look at the short-term picture, and to do that, we'll run the North Atlantic and European sequence. So here we go, and the thing to notice in the short term is that high pressure starts to build to the north, and it becomes centered to the north of the UK, so we have colder air coming down right across the country through the coming days. And we can see that by Friday, if I just pause here, 9 GMT, this uh, sequence actually shows a possibility of some sleet or snow showers affecting eastern parts of Britain. So it is going to be turning colder, but for most of the country it will be dry with those showers quickly fading away. Now as we head through the weekend, things begin to change again, and by the early part of next week what we can see is the high pressure has declined southwards, and the Atlantic is beginning to make inroads across the northern half of the UK, weather fronts are starting to bring rain and the potential for milder conditions. I think during the middle third of the month a more unsettled pattern will become established. I'll show you the 16-day GEFS surface pressure uh, plot for York data table for York and each column on this represents one day so we can see we're going forward 16 days and in the short term the columns are fully orange and yellow and orange which is indicating high pressure but as we go forward, more and more are green and blue, which show low pressure becoming increasingly influential. So it's turning more unsettled as we, as we go through that middle third of March. As the weather's going to be coming from the Atlantic, that would suggest that it will be milder as well. But if I just show you this chart from the ECM model, it's valid for uh, Friday the 12th of March. What we can see is that although the weather is indeed coming in from the Atlantic, there's more of a sort of north, northwesterly influence across the UK. So, so it could actually be quite chilly through this period and cold enough, if this is correct, for sleet or snow in the northern half of the UK at times, especially over high ground. I think that is something to keep an eye on, uh, certainly in the northern parts of the UK. Okay, this is the 16-day uh, London GEFS plot showing upper air temperatures and precipitation. So again, what we can see is that trend towards cold conditions in the short term with the cold air that we saw in the initial sequence moving down from the north. It then, temperatures then begin to recover. They stay a little bit below the 30-year average um, until around about the 13th of March the 14th of March, then they sort of flatline around the 30-year average um, as we head into the second half of the month. In terms of precipitation, it's, it's, it's a dry start. There's, there's a little bit of showery rain in a very short term, but then it becomes dry again as high pressure becomes dominant. But later on, through that middle third of March, we see an increasing number of rain spikes, which are, are again indicating that transition to an unsettled period of weather. If I bring up the Belfast plot, the overall pattern is quite similar. 
except the, the rainfall spikes there are quite a lot bigger and that's what you would expect with its more westerly location. It's bearing the brunt of that Atlantic onslaught. And the Edinburgh plot shows something very similar. Um, we see the rainfall spikes there appearing during the middle third of the month, possibly not quite as wet as Belfast, but a bit wetter than London. So, so all in all, it's, it, it's, it's a fairly consistent picture across the UK with that transition to more unsettled weather and uh, across all, uh, during the middle third of the month. What about the second half of March? Well, here's the 850 HPA temperature anomaly chart for week beginning Monday 15th of March. So this is averaging out the forecast 850 HPA temperatures across the week in, in its entirety. So, so it could be masking colder and milder days, but the general picture here is showing essentially a, a, a small positive anomaly across the UK. The, the pinks there are indicating the upper air temperatures are forecast to be a little bit above the 30 year average in most of the UK during this week taken as a whole. If I just jump forward to the week beginning the 22nd of March, so the last full week of the month, it's again it's a similar picture. The anomaly there is if anything it's positive, pinks and reds maybe just in, in the north of the UK, northeast of the UK, but but there isn't a big deviation from the 30 year average. So you wouldn't expect this to result in a very mild pitch across the UK. You'd expect temperatures down at the ground level to be fairly close to the seasonal average, perhaps a little bit above in the south and um, and nearer to the normal in, in the northwest. If I just bring up the surface pressure plots for the next 35 days, what I've done here is put the Inverness one next to the London one so that you can hopefully see the differences between them. Um, if we just focus on the second half of the month, what we can see is the Inverness uh, plot has mean pressure to be close to 1010, 1012 millibars for much of a period. The London plot shows uh, slightly higher surface pressure, closer to 1015 millibars, maybe 1020 millibars through that second half of the month. What those two charts suggest when taken in tandem is that high pressure is more likely to be centered to the south of the UK than it is to the north. In turn, that is indicating the likelihood of an Atlantic flow across the UK. But with drier conditions being more likely in the southern half of the UK than in the north, because they, they, that's where the high pressure is going to be closer to. So those charts are suggesting a very typical second half of the month at the moment at least. But remember as ever that at that range forecast confidence is extremely low. But certainly there's nothing in the output which would suggest anom anomalously cold or warm conditions or wet or dry conditions through the, the second half of March at the moment. So to summarise, it's likely to turn colder by the 5th of March with frost becoming widespread. There could also be some wintry showers in the eastern half of Britain for a time, but they probably won't amount to a great deal. During the middle third of the month, it turns unsettled. With a west or northwesterly flow, it could be quite chilly at times in the north, perhaps cold enough for some, some sleet or snow, especially over high ground. Temperatures in the south are likely to be close to or a little bit above the average. During the last third of the month, there could be some rain in all parts of the UK, but the general tendency is for pressure to be higher to the south and lower to the north. So the southern half of the UK can expect the driest conditions with the wettest weather in the north. Temperatures will probably not be that far from the seasonal average, perhaps a little bit above over, over that last third of a month taken as a whole. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching this. And as ever, if you found it useful and enjoyed it, please remember to hit the subscribe and like buttons below. Thanks very much now. Bye.